Awesome. Happy Monday. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Tattoo Weekly. We've been out for a couple of weeks, so we're really excited to get back together and see what everybody's been up to. Before we get started, uh, drop a comment in our YouTube channel to let us know that all of these streams are working, whether or not you're watching on Reinventing the Tattoo YouTube or Fireside YouTube. So it's uh, pretty cold now here. How are you guys doing today? I'm freezing my butt off in Appleton, um, Wisconsin, but uh, yeah. You must be doing better in Tennessee, Jake. Oh, it's nice today. It's like uh, almost, I think it's going to be 55, 60 degrees. So I'm going to go on a run. Have I told you guys I have a, I have a race this coming Saturday, uh, oh. a, a, 10, a 10K? And I thought I was just going to run it with my wife. But man, I'm getting pretty fast. I think I'm going to win this race. How <laughs> fast, how fast yeah. is your 10K? Uh, I, well, I was originally hoping for under an hour. Uh, but I think I'm going to be around 50 to 52 minutes on a 10. Oh, game. right on. That's that's like when I was actually running. That's what I would run it as. So that's pretty oh, good. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited. I've never been fast, but I feel I feel pretty fast right now. Yeah, I try not awesome. to run too much unless someone's you know chasing me. <laughs> yeah, I could walk though. Like if I had to do a, a march across the country, I could do I, that. But uh, I know you can. No <laughs> doubt. Slow but steady. Right. Oh, so that's yeah. that's the key. A friend of mine, a tattooer out of Georgia, uh, Will Hildebrand. He took on a oh, yeah. he took on a challenge to walk across the United States, but something happened like midpoint in the beginning of his journey that he had to turn back. So uh, yeah. I, I've 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 met him briefly a few times. He's super fit. Uh, he's like uh, he's like a bodybuilder kind of fit, and he wears the tiniest backpacks. It's so bizarre when I see. <laughs> he has like no reason giant, for it. Yeah, a giant guy with the tiniest backpack. Yeah. yeah, that's a that's that's the extent of my knowledge on Will Hildebrand. Oh, yeah, he's been tattooing for quite a while out of Africa. Yeah, yeah, he's good. Yeah, he is. But he's yeah, uh, if we want to run some intros, I have the clip today, so. All right, let's do it. Yes. Oh, intros. Shit, I thought, I thought we were talking about the clip. Well, the, the intro <laughs> clip. <I'll> st- <laughs> it's been two start, weeks. It has, it's been two weeks. So I have, I'm, I'm out of practice. Hey, I'm Jake. I'm from the Fireside Tattoo Network, where we... Uh, where we're uh, trying to blur the lines between tattooing and fine art. I'm just changing my tagline weekly so you guys can't keep up. Uh oh. Yeah. I'm uh, Gabe Ripley, computer geek, uh, part time CTO or CMO, uh, technology or marketing people, a person for tattooers and tattoo studios and companies. Uh, yeah. Tattooingnow.com. Two decades plus. Yeah. Can't, get, can't get out of it. Hmm. All right. Wait, Lauren, you didn't introduce yourself. No, she didn't. Monday. I swear I made that uh, video and I thought, wow, you know, for stock shit, this is actually pretty good. Yeah. And then I burned it. So <laughs> I can never fix it. <laughs> burned it. That's. Uh... I, I really have no idea what happened to it. There was a misspelling in the in the source files, but I searched through some of the hard drives for the source. Yeah, you know, we just uh, have to we redo can... it. Yeah, we can just redo it. We can just redo it. I'm sure we can come up with uh, something something else. How was everybody's holiday? Good. It was great. Um, my family, my mom was in Mexico, so my sisters and I got together and did a lot of stuff with uh, our families and stuff like that. So nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got out to uh, see my daughter out in the, in the college out in the Finger Lakes. It's uh, it's, uh, it's beautiful out there, and um, it, uh, the it's fun because the early mornings seem I think it seems a little bit earlier there because the sun, you know, it's that much farther uh, west. Time zones are weird. Time's weird. Anyways, it was fun to be with a daughter. Got to talk philosophy and uh, uh, time and stuff. <laughs> awesome. Well, we went to uh, to we Asheville. To yeah, uh, we went to Asheville, North Carolina, and um, had a had a great time hanging out with family. We actually spent about 
Uh, we went last Tuesday to Asheville. Then Friday, we were there to visit family, a kind of extended family, more friends, family, uh, people we want to hang out with. And uh, uh, and then on Friday, we all of us, both families, mine and, and theirs, loaded up and we drove to Crossville, Tennessee, which is a kind of a, I don't know, there's not a lot there, but there's a pretty cool little like uh, community. I think it's mostly a retirement community, but they had like uh, fishing and like mini golf and indoor pool and oh, cool. all kinds of stuff, alcohol. Yeah. All that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So we had a, <laughs> we had a lot of, we had a lot of fun. We spent a couple of nights there and just got back home yesterday. I did tattoo one day when I was in North Carolina, uh, just cause I can't get away from it. So the, the first day that I was there, I worked on a client that I have kind of in that area. And, uh, I worked in Hendersonville at continuum gallery and I got a little oh, bit of footage of that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Katie, um, uh, and uh, I reached out to her to see if I could tattoo a day there. My client came in from Raleigh. So my client had maybe a three hour drive to Hendersonville. And then from mm-hmm. where I was in the Asheville area, I had maybe a 30 minute drive. And so uh, Katie was nice enough to to let me tattoo there all day, the day before Thanksgiving. They oh. all <laughs> uh, like they were there just basically like I thought everyone was tattooing, but everyone else tattooed for about an hour. And I had about seven hours of tattooing. So <laughs> thank you to everyone at Continuum for like sticking around and leaving the lights on for me and waiting and putting off your holiday plans so that I could tattoo. I felt like a complete ass, but uh, yep. but well, it seems it like a fun. really awesome place there, though. And they do events and such. Yeah, I want to show some video here in just a little while. I actually talked to Katie about coming on uh, a Tattoo Weekly, and she's down for it. So maybe we'll oh, cool. get her on the schedule in the next couple of weeks. She's really doing some cool stuff there. And it's I think it would be inspiring for people who uh, maybe own shops in smaller towns, which has always been kind of a hindrance. You know, in years past, you're always trying to, like, uh, keep decent artists. You're or, talking you know, to the wrong guy about small towns. Yeah. I love small towns. Well, yeah, that's good. That was going to be I'm going point. smaller next time. No, I'm not right. smaller. I'm not. I'm not doing it again. But I remember um, when you showed off some of the continuum stuff. Though it was it's really I mean, cool. A- Asheville's like a destination. I mean, it's a, it's very much like this area here. You know, so yeah. it's like small town, but it's like artsy. There's you know a lot of artists migrating through and, and to there and and from yep. there. And yeah, Asheville has really exploded, and it's kind of like what we see in a lot of areas. Uh, it, it's it's it, they kind of priced out. Uh, all of the artists that used to live and work there. Yeah. So all of these surrounding mountain towns are really kind of blowing up. Uh, like Black Mountain is where my family is. And they're about 20 minutes outside of Asheville. And Black Mountain is getting mm. big. And then Hendersonville, where uh, uh, where Continuum Gallery is. When I pulled it, I was there last March to teach a workshop. And um, when I, so it's been, what, six or eight months or something like that. And uh, there were, I, I spotted two or three cranes and I'm talking like a Mayberry. In oh, the town. Wow. This is like a town that just like a little town center, two or three cranes there that are like doing major con- renovations and construction. They're probably, I saw at least four or five new uh, like brew pubs and, you know, bottle shops and wine mm-hmm. places like in, in that town mm-hmm. that weren't there the last time I was there. So those small towns are really in that area specifically are really blowing up. Uh, uh, but yeah, so I, I, um, in fact, I could, I guess I'd go ahead and do a quick little walk through of it while we're, while we're talking about it. I don't know what's on our agenda for today. Do we have one? <clears throat> Nothing I know of. Uh, let's, uh, maybe we'll, hopefully we can depend on the people on our, our viewers today to keep the conversation rolling. We can, you know, uh, we can, we got to just get a little more organized. We can give away shit now. Like you've got some, uh, some online courses. Uh, I've got, oh, yeah. you know, all the online tools, you know, there's reinventing uh, courses and subscriptions. Yeah. I'd like we I, get I people like commenting a... and sharing around and shit and plugging, you know, they do it enough. We'll, uh, when we hit, when we hit 15 online viewers at the same time, well, I don't know. No, it's cheesy. Never mind. <laughs> when, uh, um, I do have a few things, yeah, along those lines that I wouldn't mind talking about today, but also don't want to, uh, you know, like control the whole conversation. It's all you, it's all you for can, now. Let me see if I can pull up this, uh, find where I have my downloads. Here we go. That's got to be where this Let's is. See, Anthony, uh, Anthony Troche. Oh, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. Sorry, buddy. Uh, says, good morning, guys, with a smiley face, a teethy smiley. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. Uh, let's see. Sort it's on the Fireside, uh, Fireside YouTube channel uh yeah yeah let us uh everyone jump in let us know how your how your holiday went okay here it is i found it this is a quick little it's a portrait mode kind of video uh and i just put it together for uh just because i was 
walking it, it's short but uh, but I, what I wanted to highlight here let me see let me go up here and share my screen what I wanted to highlight here was uh was her gallery her art gallery is really something special and it's just I mean I've only been there twice but both times she has had some really high level painters in this show and she has like two or three painters in at one time so even though I've only been there twice I've seen like six different artists uh share screen let's see let's it let's see it I'm doing I'm trying I'm slow I'm sorry <laughs> We're, we're the tech, we're tech and uh, host. Sorry. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, let's see if I can. Get... Oh, you got video. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't get a great shot of the entire outside, but it's a really beautiful building downtown. And she has oh. these big garage doors. Oh yeah, cool. Look at this, and then a main stage. Fuck yeah! Isn't that awesome. We should definitely put yeah. together an event here. Absolutely. Such a cool spot uh all the tattoo stations are down the hall i didn't go record all of those but they're back behind that front desk but here's the gallery uh, uh yeah. beautiful uh and i'm drawing a blank on these artists names she sent them to mm. me but there are three Bam. different artists in this show that's a nice big ass space for sure it's huge it's huge it's so cool sorry i was playing with transitions my son's been teaching me cap cut and i'm trying to figure out what all the transitions uh, nice. do. next <laughs> time you also gotta go we're, we're, a, we're a horizontal format show yeah i know <laughs> I, I i really wasn't recording it for us uh let's see it's stop sure well, uh, uh, we, really we need our checklists <laughs> yeah i was recording it just for uh for like an instagram story or something like sure. that but sure did i stop did i stop the share or no yep you did okay. yeah, yeah all right yeah. So Alexander says, uh, good morning. He's in a small town in Decanter, Alabama. Awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah. Decanter, Alabama. I, I know uh, of it. Uh, I don't think I've ever been there. I feel like I've been through it. I'd have to look. You know, I really do. Like, I put all the events in small places. You know, the, the tattoo gathering is in Hancock, Mass. It's the least densely populated place in Massachusetts. Um, uh, it's definitely more work to, you know, import everybody. But on the other hand, uh, you do get to kind of curate your you know, your clientele and your audience, if you're in a, in a smaller place, you know, if it's yeah. a destination, less assholes can get there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's probably true. Well, uh, I, I actually pulled up their website in the background and it, it's pretty cool. They have tattoos or gallery and uh, events and classes. So that's a good spot to go. If you want to see what they had yeah. scrolling through the types of events, they have all sorts of stuff, but they have their calendar right there. Oh, screen share. Do you screen share. Yeah. Do you want to, yeah. Do you want to share it? I, I, I should have gone there instead of my okay. goofy yeah. video. Well, that gives me a chance to go get my uh, refill my tea too. <laughs> uh, yeah, yes. So if you can see that, they have the dance music and different contests, a masquerade, and you can rent the venue as well. It seems. It seems. Yeah. Yeah, I did see that. So Shane Huss has a black letter calligraphy seminar. It looks. Yeah, and I think she's got um, I think she's got Shane Huss coming up in a future exhibition too, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Uh, and if you, and also um, uh, Sandy Land, Sandy Strom, uh, is she's mm -hmm. trying to get for for a show, which I would I would make the trip back to North Carolina for that live show. She's amazing. Okay. Tom Strom's Jackie uh, Strom. Ja what did I say? So, yeah, yeah, Jackie Strom. I said, isn't her name Sandy Lands on the thing? Uh, on Instagram, oh maybe, maybe Sandy Lance. Yeah, uh, that's that's why I always no, say no. Sandy. Yeah, Jackie Strom. Sorry. Oh uh, man, uh, they've got a show at a uh, Hope Gallery. Uh, Jackie and, and Tom, right now, I got to get my ass down there. It's showing just for a little bit longer. Huh. But, yeah. So if anybody's in New England and they haven't been to Hope Gallery, they should be driving there. I'll meet you there for pizza. Yeah. And yeah. this is who you're talking about, Katie. Yeah, Katie Montez. She she's the owner. She and her husband. Uh, and um. Oh man, I don't know why I'm drawing blank on her husband's name. Super cool guy, but he did the entire like build out of this building, and oh, and cool. I didn't see a lot of it before, but just mm -hmm. walking through it with him and, and seeing the work. work that he's put in is uh, uh, it's a it's impressive. They really yeah. put a lot of I, and they, I'm like both excited and I'm having a heart attack for him. Yeah, yeah. Well, they took you know they took that building on I think just before COVID, and then um, oh. and then you know the one thing that COVID gave them together. was a lot of was a lot of time to work on the building because they weren't tattooing. Sure. But, but yeah. Um, yeah, just a really cool place. Really nice people. Uh, she has a couple of apprentices who are uh, who are doing doing great. I spent a little time with one of them. They both were in my workshop back last March. And then um, I spent a little Nick's right there is the one that I spent some time with uh, over the 
last week and she was tattooed and practicing on some fake skins. And so we talked a little bit about some of the stuff that she was struggling with. She's been, uh, Katie has a really kind of set, it uh, sounds like she has a really set kind of um, uh, order of operations for how she's training the apprentices and they're working online work first. And, and Nix was moving right along, doing great with line work and then got stuck tattooing someone's hip, like, you know, just like a, oh. right at the waistline. And, and she felt like it all fell apart for her, which is super common with that. That's a, that's a tricky area to get solid lines in, especially when you're just learning. This is who you're talking about. I'll pull up. Yeah. Nix. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know. Yeah. I guess she's not showing a lot as far as tattoo stuff. She's still doing free tattoos. For now. So she's, she has a certain, certain number of free tattoos that she's doing their line work. And then she's going to move into, to shading. And uh, it was cool because I was working on a piece where I was doing some of that kind of um, whipped stipple dot work. It was kind of an atmospheric, uh, like uh, seascape landscape kind of piece. And so she came in and was watching, you know, watching me tattoo. And I was showing her how I turned the machine way down and kind of how I was moving my hand to get that kind of really smooth peppery dot kind of stuff. And then as soon as I finished the tattoo, I walked in to say goodbye to her and she's on a piece of practice skin working on uh, that so technique. I was like, oh, look uh, at you. I cool. love that when people yeah. actually like don't get super defensive and they uh -huh. like soak it in and, you know, like, like the first step is just, and I'm guilty as, as everybody, you know, getting defensive and being like, ah, and, you know, then the second stage is like being able to like not get defensive and then soak it in the people that are like, OK, wait, and, then, and they start going for it. Like before yeah. you even like leave, it's that's a really awesome uh, mentality. You know, yeah, definitely. Definitely. I was excited. To see I tried to do was, that more. <laughs> she was practicing it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. These pieces, that's some of the pieces that I that I saw. And I forget that it's cool. She has you know, the, the artists in, in each of the shows that I've seen. They're kind of like. The, she'll have multiple artists in the show, but their work is all kind of related in some way. It seems like whether it's just in scale or in, um, mm -hmm. it, you know, in technique or whatever. So these are all kind of large portraits. And the person that was in the, f when I first, uh, the video that I showed that I first walked in and the guy with the kind of bloody face, uh, that those paintings are a lot more kind of like um, brushwork, kind of heavy, big, like deliberate marks. And then the ones you were just seeing right there kind of has this dab look, kind of like a Surratt kind of, style where it's just like dabs of color that that kind of optically blend together so you know different different approaches but same subject matter so pretty cool awesome yeah uh but yeah so we we should definitely find a time to get her on the show and she can kind of share some of the things they have go, coming up and and i think a lot of tattooers who are in smaller towns could uh you know might be inspired by by what she's doing because she's using the small town to her advantage like they have kind of art walks or community crafts fairs and stuff like that and she's open for all of those things mm -hmm. and she luckily has that beautiful kind of bay door garage door that opens up so they can literally just set up and have you know uh, have artwork out there or drawing and painting or you know someone's you know people are tattooing in the back and uh you know and they have bands playing or whatever and can really uh they, they've really seems like they're using the small town vibe to their advantage really well you know, I mean, you can make a bigger uh, impact in a small town, right? And I mean, I was deliberate about that when I was putting down my shops or, mm -hmm. or my first shop and um, and inadvertently with the others, um, or, or maybe it was deliberate. Uh, you know, you can make a, you know, if you're bringing in, you know, say five, you know, to 10 people a day, you know, at, at the beginning, uh, you know, in a smaller town, that could be noticeable on a street, right? That could be five lunches, you know, mm -hmm. at, a, at a restaurant every day, you know, and then all of a sudden you get like a couple artists in and everything gets real, really busy. And if you're bringing in, a, you know, a couple hundred, you know, 500 people a week or something, um, all of a sudden, you know, that becomes a, you know, an economic engine. Part of it is like, if there's, if there's like small towns that are like, ah, we don't want tattoo shops here. It's like, man, you don't want the dough. Okay. I mean, I'm not all about the dough. Like, there's a lot of other awesome things that happen with tattoo. I mean, the more important things are are what happen. But you know, when you're talking about bureaucracies and towns, it's like I don't understand why you wouldn't want to have a, you know, people coming in and spending money, and right. uh, you know, after they drop seven hundred bucks, fifteen hundred bucks on a tattoo, their you know thirty dollar lunch, is, you know, or whatever isn't. Uh, anything, yeah. You know? What one thing I'm curious about with especially back when you started, uh, when you started bringing in really high level guest artists and everything else to such a small town to to um, uh, to East Hampton like what what gave you the idea that that was even going to be possible because I always felt like even in Memphis I always thought that's ah, harder to get 
like it's harder to get good ass guest artists here because yeah we're not in new york or chicago or some destination kind of city yeah, where there's a lot of people that be. don't like cities i mean i guess it's really what you're looking for right so like i'm sure that the artists there was definitely some artists that by the time i got to east hampton like what the fuck i can't believe like you know it seems like there's so much action online and here's the thing right like, it seems like there's so much action online can't believe this is such a tiny little you know 800 square foot you know spot in the beginning um i had a mat you know internet you know it's like I, I you know i've been a computer geek doing websites you know for 25 years and um you know we're not beholden to the instagrams or facebooks like people go online they search for tattoos and then they land at shops you know and um there's a tremendous amount of tattoos like so again so i guess the answer to that is i, I knew because we had all this internet action going on mm. um and i had been working with a lot of awesome tattooers and they were like hell yeah we'll, we'll swing you know and again a lot of it's just a personal connection right like you know, they, they wanted to come and hang out. They knew that, you know, I wasn't going to bring them some stupid place. And, you know, then they landed East Hampton. The community is great here. You know, mm -hmm. it's a, a little artsy. To your point, like Northampton, all the artists were getting priced out of Northampton 10, 15 years ago, you know, uh, or 15 plus years ago. I remember Don McCulley, the, the, a, a drummer friend of mine, uh, suggested East Hampton. And um, so, yeah, so like everybody was kind of like the artsy people were moving to East Hampton. I remember coming partying here in East Hampton with uh, Angry Johnny and the Killbillies you know, warehouse, you know, warehouse parties. He's a, he's a great, uh, artist. Uh, anyways. Um, so yeah, I knew, but I knew I had, we had the action. Like I was, I wouldn't have opened up a shop if it wasn't kind of stupid not to, you know, at that point we had like two, two million, maybe one to 2 million people a month on tattoo now, tremendous amount of fucking uh, people. I could, I, I was, I was able to, you know, it was, it was pretty tremendous amount of people. Yeah. And, that's um, a lot. But, uh, you know, but ultimately, you know, we kept track of everybody and we, you know, emailed everybody and, you know, I was always a computer geek. So even though we were in the middle of nowhere, you know, between the quality of the talent and the reach that we have ha that we had and have online, you know, we're able to match up clients with talent. And so if you have artists that want to go and hang out in a nice, cool little town in New England, you know, eating good food and, you know, hearing good music and, you know, chilling at cool places. I mean, that's not a bad, I mean, I, you know, there's a lot of people that like cities. There's know. a lot of people that like small towns. I, I only I only made it once and it was when you were in the theater building, but I was a little mm -hmm. nervous about whether or not I would tattoo i was coming there to tattoo and i was like ah, oh, small town i don't know if anyone knows me up there and uh uh but i thought well at the very least you know i'd get to know you guys a little better i knew a few of the artists at your shop that i knew i'd like to get to know or at least meet because you had some really high level people there and it seemed like a cool town but i showed up and ended up because of you know just because of the network uh and the reputation of the shop ended up with like a two-day projects like a you know a, a, like basically a half of a, a a whole outer arm so i had awesome. like a 16 hours worth of tattooing in two days and then the third day i you know i just kind of i found an awesome little basement bar and spent some time there spent some time hanging out with you know with you and with some of the other folks and uh it, it was and it was great it was one of the better guest artist experiences that i'd uh, that i'd ever had except for it was fridge it was february it was brutally cold but <laughs> yeah it could get cold uh, yeah. It keeps a lot of the other people away, but uh, yeah, you know, it's a, uh, it's a lot of people, uh, you know, did come in through, through town or, you know, we'll figure something out again. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, hospitality, I mean, you know, it's, uh, it's also not for everybody. I saw a lot of shops like try to pick up, um, you know, guest artists once a week or whatever. And it's, you know, it's a lot of entertaining and, you know, it, it's tough to do, you know, consistently over time, <laughs> you know, but anyways, yeah, no, like small towns, you know, if you have cool stuff to do and, you know, you're not, you know, and you're hospitable to, to, to client, you know, to, to both clients and to tattooers, mm -hmm. um, you know, and again, I, you know, I also had a million people a month on the website. It's a lot of juice, you know, so it wasn't like I was just, you know, I knew a couple of people and I was able to open up a shop, you know, mm -hmm. um, I knew a million people. Yeah. Um, yeah. One other cool thing about that, that I always thought if I were to, uh, I don't really have any interest in owning a shop, but if I did, I like that you would, you had multiple guest artist booths. And so I was there at the same time that another guest artist was there. So you had two people that were kind of unfamiliar uh, with the area, unfamiliar with the shop, didn't know the other artists. And that's kind of cool because they, you know, almost could, they could kind of team up, you know, and explore together. together. Yeah. Oh, Jinx, you owe me a beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So that was, that was really uh that was really cool and I man I wish I could remember uh the name I, I know you won't remember that there was the coolest guy uh Texas tattooer that was that was there at the same time as me man I cannot think of his name but Texas. I thought yeah I, I think he only came that once in fact he was you did a little interview with him he was considering maybe coming up for a 
residency for a, mm. a permanent artist long beard long hair I don't know why I can't think of his name really nice guy I, I never actually kept up with him after that though uh, but we hung out the mm. whole time you know I went to dinner mm. with him two or three times we drank beers every night yeah so well, it's cool uh, now I'm happy to help facilitate that at other people's locations yeah right <laughs> right uh, so if, about, you, well, if you want to, if you got a little dough in a budget, bring me, I'll do shit. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's fun. I mean, what else are we doing? I'm doing a uh, black and gray week down at a uh, unified tattoo in, uh, in Florida. When is that? So that's May 1st to the 6th, 2023. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, Bob Tyrell. Oh shit. I don't want to even um, go over the lineup because I don't want to go over the lineup, but we do have well, a, before a, we a, do that. I found this little video of Jake. That's kind of funny. I don't know if this ah, is awesome. the same guest spot. Oh yeah. Oh is yeah. This, yeah. Nice. I think so. I think we did a off the map live. Yeah, we did do one there. That was at, at uh, first the sixth, four, 2023. Four years ago. Uh, this uh, May seems a lot longer. Okay, I don't want to hear 2023. Yeah, four years. Huh? I, I was wearing that shirt yesterday. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> nice. Who would have ever guessed I had that shirt for so many years? That's cool. I remember watching these on YouTube. Like I told you, Gabe, uh, all those off the map live shows is. <laughs> Yeah. It was fun, you know, Wait, that theater building, you know, when I see those large buildings and I see the theater building and, uh, you know, it, it's definitely tough to like try to rebuild that shit, you know, I, I, you know what, it's not that, I mean, it, it's incredibly tough, but it, I'm not rebuilding that, right, but it, it's really re kind of rewarding, you know, seeing all the different crews of people working on similar projects of their own flavor. But like at the at Paradise or whatever, when people are coming together and you get to look around the room and it's like, oh, you've got to show, you've got to show, you've got to show, you've got to, you know, and different people are building, again, venues and, and you know, Derb basically has got a full setup with a stage setup that, you know, that Fawn and, and Kyle are, you know, using. And uh, so uh, uh, it's weird. But on the other hand, I did go to a rock and roll show uh, at the fucking, you know, theater building where the tattoo shop was <laughs> man, yeah. when the fucking guitarist is like fucking killing it. And he's like, man, I'll play in this fucking place forever. It's beautiful. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm glad. To, I'm glad. I wish you could play forever here. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, shit. Uh, K uh, Katie Montez just jumped on and said, hey, I missed you earlier, but I'm here now. So, Katie, you missed us. We just we just spent like a. 15 minutes highlighting continuum so you have to go Hi, back Katie. and watch you have to oh, go you back and watch the replay how about um i, I was if, uh... i was slow i i just i i sent her an instagram message like right before we started here the oh. so it was my fault for not telling her earlier that we were going to highlight the shop uh you try sending her the zoom link yeah uh yeah yeah we could if you've uh well we could ask her or we could plan for an actual day i don't know if she was planning the yeah be on today but i'll I'll reach out uh we'll we'll get uh we'll find a day and maybe that'll give her time to give give katie time to uh perfect prepare like who who the you know upcoming artists upcoming shows things like that while we're talking about that though the all the guest artists guest spot kind of stuff um lauren what is happening with i know that when you built out your new space you have a uh kind of a spot for guest artists have you guys started to really uh, no i'm thinking like yet? january i've put a lot of thought into where and how and what but um mm -hmm. recent we're in a like a center in our historic it's in a historic building right on the river in appleton wisconsin which is a great area but one of the local places i guess it housed like 15 or 16 creatives you know digital designers artists painters tattooers and so in the center that i'm at it's a big complex we're starting to see more tattooers it's pretty interesting right now in my complex there's four shops hmm. it's wow, pretty well, cool four four private studios oh, okay so, yeah it's um it's pretty interesting um i so really it, would like you to come visit soon yeah i'd love to come up not not maybe. in the winter though maybe, no maybe <laughs> i wouldn't do that to you thanks uh what so how big is appleton you may have told me this before uh, maybe like 70,000 or so, but we have like oh, okay. the Fox cities right. in the immediate surrounding area. So, gotcha. Um, so it's not, it's not a small, small town. I would, no. I would assume, um, uh, that, that, that where Katie's shop is and, and well, Asheville's got like 90,000. Yeah. Asheville's yeah. A, a bigger city, but, but Henderson, Katie, if you're, will you answer how, about how big you think Hendersonville is like population wise, if you know, it's it, all those towns, like I said, they're growing. So uh 15,000 so says 15, uh 15,000 okay says wikipedia okay yeah this is a and where i'm at basically if you go 30 minutes or 20 minutes north is green bay after that it's like uh wide open wisconsin 
<clears throat> so the shops and the availability of things and, you know, kind of ends Appleton kind of is, you know, there's a few other cities in the area, but people come to Appleton for art related things and events. It's um, kind of like a central hub north of Milwaukee. Yeah. Yeah. As far as yeah, supplies, well, there's no supplies available. Everything's online. You know, it's um, kind of lost land if you get a little bit north of where I'm at. Oh, uh, gotcha. You like Something. on the wall? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something that surprised me at, at Continuum is what, while I was there, a supply truck came through and I had no idea in a town. Who was I mean, it? We, I don't know. I, I didn't. Was it I, Bloody just, Wolf, maybe? Uh, Katie might have to answer that. I was tattooing, oh. but someone came back and stuck their head in and was like, hey, if you need anything, there's a supply truck. What a luxury. Here. Yeah, because, I mean, we don't have supply trucks in Memphis and we have millions of people mm. here. There's no, there's no like, supply. you know, you, you we order from, you know, we order online like yeah. everybody else. That's, that's so. interesting because if you go on the West Coast, obviously I'm familiar where people are. It's crazy. But there are some really good, reliable companies that are coming up. But like, you know, like a friend of mine, Steve at Unlimited Inks in Dallas, they have to have a good plan because I've seen so many people just want to jump, be like, oh, mobile supplies out of industry people more so than, you know, owning a brand. Hmm. And it's yeah. kind of, it's it's weird because you still have to understand and know how tattooers operate to really be successful at it. But I yeah. have seen some of the West Coast guys kind of moving like this in the country a little bit with like big plans to, for more coverage right. and stuff. So. Right. Uh, Katie says it's all American tattoo supply. All American. So wonder, okay. Yeah. I wonder if that's a regional thing or if that's, uh, I don't know. That's There are so many small companies that you, that it's interesting to see how the products kind of shift and rotate and go from one person to another. <clears throat> yeah. It just, you know, it changes in the last 10 years and how that works. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, one other thing, while, while I was in uh, while I was in that area, I met up with uh, in Asheville. Had coffee right before we left with uh, uh, with the artist uh, Anthony. I can never pronounce his last name. Polentino. He was uh, the last live show we did. Uh, he was the one that that won the uh, the foundations mm. uh, for choosing the mystery artist. Uh, so I met oh, up with cool. him. He he lives in Asheville and he's an apprentice and. Uh, I met up with him because I, uh, after we, after he was on that live show, we jumped on a call and um, I'm trying to, you know, get people involved in this, in our inside fireside group. And I thought he was a perfect kind of addition. So I'm trying to kind of like handpick people before we really pitch it. And I was talking to him at the coffee shop, uh, you know, we've, um, uh, we're seeing more and more in the, in the way of like tattoo, like memberships, Russ's group, uh, uh, the launchpad group is really growing and is big and of course guy with reinventing is doing is doing a membership and so i was kind of just brainstorming with him about what a membership looks like and i decided that i don't like the term membership i'm going to change i think we i think we need to change that i think we're going to call it for fireside i'm going to call it like the inside fireside tattoo club or something like that but uh we were talking about just ways to um to really make it super useful and not just be another version of what other people are already doing, you know, and since everything we do is so drawing focused, I definitely would like it to be a drawing group and something that we're doing it through discord. So my, my pitch to, to Anthony was like, how would we, um, how would we make it where when people get up in the morning, instead of getting on Instagram or TikTok, they came to the discord group first, like how could it be, you know, more engaging than flipping through social media and uh, and I would like to try to build that with a smaller group of people before we kind of open it up and do something bigger. Uh, I actually just finished a complete uh, 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 coincidence, but I just finished uh, re-listening to uh, The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell. And a big part of that book mm -hmm. is about groups of, and when you get more than 150 people, it really kind of falls apart. And he has a lot of evidence to back that up. And so I was like, oh, that's really a cool time for me to listen to, the, or to like hear that again while I'm thinking about this group. And so I'm thinking about the group being super small, but, uh, but, you know, one thing that I was thinking um, is I, I think everyone should pay membership dues in any group just to have some skin in the game. But I was thinking about treating it more like, you know, reinvesting all, the vast majority of membership dues back into the group and whether that's with, you know, uh, buying gear to do monthly or weekly giveaways to, uh, to, to, destination types of experiences that we could put some part of the bill to, to, you know, how I was doing this thing with the AI art where I was generating AI art and then having it printed on canvases and sending it out and painting on top of the AI 
uh, mm -hmm. generated canvases. Like that would be a cool thing that you could do monthly. And it's just like brainstorming those types of ideas. Like, man, you could do so much, so many fun types of projects that you could do. It kind, of, it kind of makes it from like a, like a membership fee to like a club dues, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Kind of a different little shift in it's mentality. A, but I think right. when you wake up in the morning, it's just a, it's just habitual. It's not that you want to really scroll through Instagram. It's just habitually what you've always done. I think mm -hmm. just kind of changing that desire to do nothing or to do, to be productive with what you're searching with in the morning, you know, five minutes of, of nothing versus, you know, five minutes of productivity is different. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, what made me start thinking about the, the, the direction of it is after uh, I've got this new series of interviews from Richmond uh, 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 tattoo show that I did with um, uh, one with Javi from Tattoo Theory and one with Frank Lenatra. And we did a couple of others, but those two stood out to me because they both have big discord communities for their NFT projects. And so I've joined both of them just to kind of see what they're doing. And those people live on that thing. I mean, they're, they are so invested, not, not, not just Javi and Frank, but like all of the hundreds or thousands of people that are, that are uh, part of it, they all are like driven for the success of whatever this project is, Bored to Death Club or Battle Bunnies or, or Jesse, Jesse Smith's Carcass. Like they're in it. And they, you know, it's just like, it's, it's what they do. It's like a part of their identity. And it's not that I want people to spend, you know, 10 hours a day on, on our discord, but I would like, to create something, you know, a club that's, that people are that invested in, you know, that they just like look forward to the next day being a part of the discussion. And I, I don't know that I really know how to make that happen. That's probably why I'm bringing this up, but that's my goal. Uh, we got a bunch of different, a bunch of new, a uh, bunch of new messages on, <clears throat> on the chat here. Let's see. Uh, Another thing, Jake, I noticed, um, did you tell us how your trip to Canada was? Oh, I don't know if I did. It, I don't, yeah, I don't think know so. if we I don't know if we talked after that. I, I'm, I a, I'm just interested to know how that go. It was awesome. It was really a great uh, workshop. So I'm up there quarterly for the, my strategic coach, and um, uh, and, and I had a really I had a really great workshop this last time around. I always kind of struggle with uh, with what my focus is going to be, kind of going in, and there are a lot of new ideas that are always kind of you know pitched out there. Uh, and I'm trying to figure out how to implement them. It's a lot of smart people and, um, you know, and, and they're all working on their own businesses and we brainstorm to kind of help each other's businesses. But of course, there aren't any other artists in the group. There's no one that does anything. I mean, these people are in financial services and insurance and some people just buy and sell businesses and they do all kinds of different different things. But um, so a lot of times I, I'll, I'll, I'll show up not knowing what direction I like what I'm looking for. But then by the end of almost every meeting, I find that I've like gained so much. I take my entire day after the workshop and I make it a uh, what we call buffer days. We break our days into focus, buffer and free everybody in the group. And so I, 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 don't, I won't go into what all that is, but a buffer day is just a day that uh, uh, that where you get all of the stuff out of the way uh, so that you have really productive focus days. And focus days are the days where you are working within your unique ability, doing the things that either produce the most income or have the greatest impact, uh, the, the reason that you're here, you know, the reason that you do what you do. And so uh, my, my uh, day after coach day is always a buffer day. And I spend it just reviewing my notes, reviewing all the materials, going back and thinking about conversations uh, and then I've, I've started to build all of that into like a, a living document on Google docs where I just, uh, where I kind of add to it and try to, and try to like really distill down what I got out of the day. And, uh, the funny thing is what I find is that I'm always going back to like the beginning principles that six or seven years ago that I learned the first year that I was in this group, it's like, I always have to go back and remind myself of those, that first four sessions that I ever did. It's so funny how like all, you know, it feels like we're like getting more and more complex. We're building on this, building on that. And you always find yourself back at the beginning, like doing the same beginner stuff over again. Uh, you know, uh, the uh, it's kind of like this uh, simplify to multiply mindset. You know, if you're going to multiply your output, you can't multiply everything you do. You have to go back and simplify it first so that you can multiply the important things. And that's something that's so easy to forget. Yep. And, uh, and you have to not beat yourself up for relearning lessons. Right. 
Like yeah. after the third or fourth time, I'm like, fuck, I've learned this before. God damn it, have you fucked this up again? You've already learned this like three or wait. That's part of you life. You just love learning. <laughs> I love learning. Yeah, exactly. I'd like to learn a couple more. Uh, I'm going to fill up my team, but, but when we're ready, I do have a uh, guest, the artist uh, uh, oh, uh, fired up. So um, nice. Well, while, yeah, while, while you're doing that, I'll look here and see if we have any, um, uh, what other comments we have. Uh, Katie says that the All American Tattoo Supply is uh, they're new and they're small, but they they carry quadrant cartridges, and I know a lot of people love those. They seem pretty welcome if they can poke their head into a shop. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah or to a is. nice location, you know. Yeah. Uh, then we have uh, ooh J M A. How would you pronounce J M A N? Jaman Jaman Greyhead. Oh, okay. From uh, Jamin from the Philippines uh, wants to know. Uh, what's the best machine for outlining and for shading? Uh, a tattoo machine. No. Yeah, tattoo machines are great for that. Uh, that's that's always a. It's there's not a best one, unfortunately. I wish we could give you that answer. It's uh, it, it you just have to uh, figure out what works what works best for you. There are a lot of great ones out there these days. I mean, you can basically, I mean, you can order a, a you know an Amazon knockoff machine, which I prefer you didn't, but you could order anything and and make it work. But it's all about uh, you know. It's all about finding a machine that works with the way that you make marks instead of uh, trying to uh, having to change your mark making to fit a machine. That's the way that I always think about it. Cool. Okay. So now we are officially, what was the name of this segment? Yeah. What do we call it's been a, the, who did it's it? Who not, the fuck did it? Who, who did these amazing who, fucking yeah, tattoos? Yeah. Who done it? This, these yeah. are paintings, but this is a, a, also a prolific tattooer. Okay. Um, and okay. Is, are, we, are we giving up a prize? Are we doing a prize thing? What kind of prize do we have? I don't know. I've got like I've got some business courses. You've got some courses. Or maybe we could just give up one of whatever the person who wins wants. So like okay, a, a, I'll, of the courses. I'll, I'll throw out a Fireside Foundations course. Uh, well, I'll say this: Fire either Foundations or Simplify Foundations. If you're a beginning tattooer or apprentice, Simplify. If you're an advanced tattooer trying to get better, perfect. Okay, okay. Um, and then let's. Okay, well here we go. I'm just going to start sharing. Boom. Okay. So these are the, mm -hmm. and the, I'm, all, I'm only going to show paintings, uh, okay. but there's a couple of them that are classics. Uh, although it's fun because this, this fella kind of, um, he does a lot of work outside of the tattoo world. He does a lot of paintings uh, outside of the tattoo world. Um, okay. So let's see here. And these, you know, the skulls are pretty cool, but they're not. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. What a reveal, Gabe. Yeah, <laughs> nice. I feel yeah. like I know this. I don't want to answer first, though. Yeah, I could give away some hints. I guess we need to give some hints and lifelines and stuff too, right? If people are like, you know, or if they need hints or, or something. But yeah, I guess uh, some guess in the chat, anyone just answer in the chat. So he's worked on uh, some card games uh, as a, as, a, as an illustrator, okay. like a Magic the Gathering type thing. Yeah, creating uh, some fantasy games. Yeah, I mean this is pretty cool though. Mm. Yeah, that's really okay. nice. Okay, here's a couple more. Uh, isn't it crazy? Has he ever taught at a paradise? Okay, no, maybe not. No, he okay. has not. West Coast. West I mean, that doesn't mean that we have, we've had plenty of West Coast people, I suppose. But um, but no, I've, mm -hmm. uh, it's been a long time. I do, I do do a website for him. I have done a, web, I do a website for him for a long motherfucking time, which is crazy. Uh, although the new site is desperately in need of being done. I don't see any guesses yet. Oh, I do see Joe Jodell says, "Hey guys from Arkansas, nice to actually catch you live. I'm glad you can glad you made it. T tell us what part of Arkansas you're from. That's super close to me." Hmm. Man, I don't know. Oh. Getting any any guesses on uh, on the tattoo? We're, now? we're, we're getting closer to the. Uh, oh, uh, do you BB remember King, the maybe huh? King one? Yeah. Hmm. Oh, BB King's like a caricature version, huh? So what else says Nick Baxter? I'm gonna say that's probably not Nick. Uh, nope, nope. Good Nick's guess. Nick's badass. We love Nick. Her. Look at this. This is. Yeah. Oh, from Fayetteville, Arkansas. That's not that's like four or five hours away from me, but it's beautiful in Fayetteville. I have a one of my great friends, Adam Shaw, lives in Bentonville, like right beside Fayetteville. He's uh oh, I'm giving it Adam, away now. Uh, let's see. 
Is that that's a self portrait? Uh, portrait, I guess. That is a self portrait. Yeah. Oh shit! I guess I should. Uh, okay. Ah! Okay. Uh, somebody might have. Uh, if you could rewind that, you might be able to catch it. Oh, do we? Yeah. Had a uh, had a name in it. I missed it. Hmm. Any guesses, oh. Lauren? Do you know? No. I don't know either. Let me. Uh... Uh, I do probably. I mean stylistically it's kind of I'm not all over the place but going from like the caricature stuff to the straight up cartoony stuff to more like painterly you know fantasy looking real oh, shit. like what am I doing now now I'm going crazy <laughs> I gotta stop this stop okay here I'll fire up uh, the website here for him or the Instagram you almost showed off you almost showed off all the tattoo now here's the business so. secrets I know shit <laughs> yeah um, let's see here ah okay so I wonder okay so uh there we go. This is, you'll see all those tattoos here too now. All right. Some more. When paintings. you say West Coast, are you talking like um Portland, Portland, Oregon? Portland, Oregon. Although he's also mm. from uh I think I first met him when he was down in Los Angeles, maybe. Mm. Uh okay, Cecil Porter. Cecil Porter. Porter. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Cecil Porter. I remember seeing something by Cecil Porter. Uh it was like a hyper realistic. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I, I don't know right. Cecil. I've, I've heard you talk about him before, uh, and I've seen seen his work. I, yeah, I probably would not have guessed that one. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. All Which right, so no no winners today. Save myself a foundations oh, wow. course for next week. Huh. We can do two for one. Get a, get a <laughs> studio in. Yeah. Uh, that's nice. Yeah. He does a ton of study with, you know, master painters, you know, I was uh, almost finished with his website and um, I missed my timing and he was like, I oh, man, I'm fucking ne next, you know, six months. I'm working with this guy. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if he's got some more here, uh, artwork over here. These are, you know, it's obviously clearly his new stuff. Yeah. 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 Really nice. I know we're down to the last few minutes, but I one uh, I should mention that I let me see here. Uh, we did for those of you who didn't see, uh, we had a new uh, fireside technique episode come out last Wednesday uh, on body mapping for sleeves, and it's done pretty well. A lot of folks have already seen it, but maybe I could share yeah it really quickly. Let me. Uh, Sorry, you guys keep talking. I have to. I, it's always such a challenge for me to get to share because I've I've got the. I think got, I can grab it. Can for you me. pull it up? Oh, okay, cool. You posted it five days ago, huh? Yeah, it's called accurate accurate body mapping for tattoo sleeves. Maybe you could just like scroll through. Uh, let's see. Yeah, maybe scroll if you can find an area where we're actually working. But I talk a little bit about it's like a hybrid method that I have. Uh, that I've created over the years used to, we would just use tracing paper and, you know, trace the entire arm and draw everything to scale and then make photocopies and stencils from that. And of course, now everyone's drawing digitally. So I've kind of developed this method where I do both. It's, it's kind of a hybrid. So I actually uh, still do my physical body map and I stand over it and I photograph it and add it as a layer. Uh, and there's there are a handful of steps to it. It's definitely worth watching the video if uh, if you're tattooing or if you're designing large scale stuff. But I talk about these kind of like registration marks that are on the body that you line up. So if you do it correctly, by the end of the tattoo, you're really just lining up registration marks on the stencil with registration marks that you've placed on the person's body. So it's like, you know, all of the kind of the regular kind of marks you would you would make if you're mapping out a body like the top of the shoulder, the armpits, the elbow, the bend of the arm. And you're uh, you're literally just I think I'm explaining it maybe right there. Uh, you're you're literally just physically drawing it on the person's body. And then you also have it physically mapped on the stencil and you're just lining those up so that you really don't have to think about how the image sits. And then so you can see like uh, kind of in the round, you can kind of see that registration mark, the little plus that's right there on his, the bend of his arm. And then as I go down, you can see another registration mark right there, that little circle. So those aren't things that actually get tattooed, but they're just marks for uh, 
uh, for placement on the body. And what I think that does that's, uh, that's so helpful is that it allows you to like make sure that all the elements of the tattoo uh, like interact from every angle. So if you look at a lot of people who, who are just getting into designing sleeves it, like the, this part of the arm might look fine and the inner arm might look fine and the outer arm might look fine but where they meet in the back or maybe right there on the inner arm where we are right now you'll end up with with shapes that don't line up together so people just use filler to make the difference you know they'll just use like a wind bar or a, a wave or something or just you know just let something overlap something else and and it's kind of looks clunky and so this allows you to make sure that everything interacts at all from all vantage points and uh you know and no matter where people see the sleeve from everything looks like it belongs in the same environment uh because of this mapping kind of system so uh but yeah I, I think it was it was it was an episode that I uh, actually had someone reach out from my old shop that I used to work at and, and ask that very question like how are you because I draw everything to the you know on the on the iPad or on the Cintiq uh, on each panel of the body. So I'm drawing like this panel and this panel and this panel, but then they all have to stitch together somehow. And so this is the process for how they, how they stitch together. So if you go to Fireside, it's our most recent video. Yeah. If you're already sitting there right now watching this, then, uh, you know, you could just watch it. You, can, as as you might be able to click the thing that <laughs> yeah. you do in the post. Yeah, maybe. Put the card in. Uh, I do want to plug the, uh, just before we go out, I'll plug the uh, inspiring tours because we want to, uh, Yes. Yeah, we want to we want to get some folks to come up to uh, New Hampshire, but uh, we've got a couple more minutes. I think if there's any last questions or comments, we can we'll we'll go out on the ad. Okay, yeah, yeah, we're down to the last five minutes. If anyone has any uh, any questions, any suggestions for upcoming guests, or just what we might want to hit on uh, in future live shows, that'd be cool. Yeah, see, uh, so so Jeremy Burt uh, offered up Boris Vallejo as a, as a potential painter. He's a Boris is obviously weird, and yeah. inspiring, and uh, Cecil will be very happy. He's, uh, I'm sure, he studied Boris uh, tremendously. Uh, Julie Bell, Boris's uh, partner, is fucking sick too. Yeah, yeah, I met them thanks to you in uh, in Venice, Italy. Oh yeah, that was yeah. amazing. Yeah, I did. Let's go I back to too, Venice. <laughs> I was too nervous. I was too nervous to ask him to come on the show, but I wouldn't be now. I just was there. Yeah. Yep. You know, I have another interview with them. I brought uh, Stefano down there to do an interview with them. And, and, and some of my lost years, I have like a year's worth of interviews that I haven't, you know, gone back to look at. But I have one with Boris and Julie and Stefano uh, Alcantara. Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, yeah. It was pretty sick. But uh, okay, well, let's uh, let's uh, fire up the inspiring tour. So this is happening in April, and it happens up in. Uh, currently, they're happening in North Conway, New Hampshire, at the Sam O'Reilly House. Yeah. Um, the April 14th to the 16th to 2023, there's only a limit of seven people. And it is two days of business uh, coaching dedicated for you. So we spend a little bit of time uh, getting to understand where everybody is. And then uh, a couple of days, you know, and then another day uh, purposefully yeah. uh, going through stuff uh, dedicated for our crew. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I think it'll be really helpful for people who are, if you're running a running a shop or, or planning to to start a shop with Gabe's kind of processes and uh, uh, business plan, all that type of thing that he spent so many years laying out, and then from a uh, time management and organization management uh, mindset, uh, I think that I'll uh, that's that'll be my focus uh, over the two days is um, making sure that you are simplifying before you're multiplying and and recognizing what you know, what you are doing versus uh, in, in, in a week, you know, what you are doing from Monday through Friday, uh, as opposed to what you probably should be doing. And we have a, I have a lot of fun exercises to help you to figure that out. And hopefully you meet some cool people and make new friends in a beautiful place. Yeah, you know, the network is a, is a big part of these uh, these groups. We've done a couple of them in the past, and uh, there are some other tickets. So just uh, at the sake of getting too adsy, but these are cool for, for tattooers. April 17th, the, the rate, the days after, the week after, uh, Nikki Simpson and Tuge Pool will be doing uh, tattooing. Yeah. So they're each doing a day of tattooing and then a collaborative tattoo and then uh, critiques. And then April 10th to the 13th, we've got uh, Nick Baxter and Sean Barber uh, nice. together. So they're doing that a full four days. Yeah. That one only has one spot left, right? Only one spot left. Yeah. And, yeah. and we're opening it up now that it's, uh, you know, well, if somebody could get it for somebody for Christmas or, or for fucking the holiday. Sorry, I can't believe I said Christmas. I said it again. <laughs> <sighs> That's not Sorry, bad. Anyways, you can, say, you can say Christmas. 
no ah! uh, I, I went to uh, catholic school so i got that it's, it's like uh it's in, it's both ingrained in me and it fucking sends electric shocks into my nervous system anyways point is nick and sean yeah they're awesome they'll, they'll be doing uh um, awesome yeah I, yeah i don't even need to talk about too much cause... i wish yeah i wish i wish i i wish i could take that last i would be at that one if it weren't for it's my son's birthday that week uh or else i would de- yeah. my son's birthday is the 11th so i would be in trouble if i if I chose Nick and Sean over over Max, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, they'll, they'll they'll be happening again, and maybe we'll you know maybe we'll get one down there on the on the boats with those guys. Yeah, I'd um, love to do that. I'd love to do that. We'll be on the be on the lookout, everybody, for the uh, Fireside Yacht Club starting next year. We don't have dates pinned down just yet, but that's you completely have to pin the first one down though because yeah, uh, next year time. is like fucking six weeks from now. <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, hey, what, one more thing before we wrap up. Oh, Katie actually says she'd love to feature him in a gallery show. I don't know if she's talking about Cecil or Boris. Both, I guess. But um, <laughs> one, one thing, and I know you pitched this ah, before, yeah. but I finally got this uh, Jeff and Laura's um, uh, Olinjar, I don't know how to pronounce it, a tattoo journal, Jeff Gogwe and uh, uh, and Laura Jade. And it's really, really good. I spent a little time. Out of control. Talk, yeah, I spent a little time talking with them uh, or texting with them uh, last week yeah, before it, but when they sent it out. They also sent me a super cool t shirt. Uh, nice. It's really comfortable uh that i wore in north carolina all weekend but uh yeah if, if you guys haven't checked this out yet it's really really great and they're um they're doing it just for like uh f- for the love of it i was talking to jock talking to jeff they're like <laughs> they're putting so much it's such a high quality journal they're putting mm-hmm. so much work and 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 money into it that uh they're nowhere close to break even and i was like I, i'd love to help you promote it and he was like nah i think we've i think we're all tired of looking at ads if you'll just it's just enough that you bought it <laughs> it's like okay well I'd still like to promote it. Yeah, it's okay if he doesn't want to uh, uh, promote it. We could still make sure that he's selling enough of it because, it, to your point, it's uh, regardless of, oh, come on, software update, you know, regardless of his uh, desire to sell an anti ad stance, um, it's only, you know, it, it, again, the money goes right into making it. And if we want to keep stuff like this happening, we have to keep subscribing to it. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, and then once you read it, you'll. There is no longer a tattoo artist magazine, right? So, Mm -hmm. let's uh, let's get this one rolling and going. All right, we're one minute over. We did it again. Another one in the books. Um, uh, we'll um, uh, we'll reach out. Let's try to get maybe uh, Katie while you're still here. Maybe we can plan for next uh, next Monday, and maybe she can be. Oh, um, guy invited me to tattoo uh, to tattoo me next Monday. Oh, okay. So I could be there. So I could be streaming as well. Um, oh, we'll yeah. Katie on for sure. She's available. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. Maybe we can get a, uh, yeah, maybe we can get Guy to pop in too if you're there with him. Yep. Man, be an, be an epic episode next week. Possibly. Possibly. <laughs> Tune in <laughs> to find out. <laughs> All right, everybody. Awesome. awesome. Thank you guys. Have everyone have a great week. Do some cool yep. tattoos. Share them. Yep. Anyone on reinventing, you guys can tune in later to the show for Robbie Rapol's, uh Let's talk about feelings. Ah, that's right. We should always be pitching the next show at the end of this show. We could have, we should have credits at some point. God damn. Well, <laughs> let's start. Um, right, don't forget to purchase week. reinventing the tattoo fireside tattoo network. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Just tattoo out. Wow.